And uh, Prabhupada explained this to us. But it came at a time when uh, we had been seeing him just before leaving for London in 1968 in uh, his room in Montreal. So we want some last minute instruction, you know, what to do, what were some hints, some inside information, some last minute tips, some advice, consultation, we're going to London, what should we do? So Prabhupada said he could have plays, people in England like plays, like Shakespeare, they like uh, to go out and see dramas. <clears throat> so then gradually the subject went changed and the discussion roamed around to other topics. <clears throat> so then with that behind us and forgotten, Prabhupada told us about this, this uh, movie he saw when he was very young. And in the film there was a ballroom, outdoor ballroom, and a garden party with men in formal attire and women in formal attire. And in formal attire was a coat with tails and a bow tie. And they were drinking merrily, strolling in the lane, sitting on park benches and dancing in ballroom style. Two young boys were playing pranks and they would put glue on the park benches in the hopes that when somebody stood up it would rip their clothes. So the movie was called Max Creates a Fashion. When the Max, the star of the film, sat down on the park benches, it ripped up Cedar's pants open and, in Prabhupada's words, exposed his thigh. So he went onto the ballroom, not knowing what had happened because he'd been drinking with his uh, consort, and they began to dance. And as they danced and saw everybody smiling at them, he, he became very uh, happy that he was dancing in a very attractive fashion. So he began to dance more and more in a more lively way, twirling around, and both of them were having a great time. And everybody was laughing and applauding and smiling. And then another person thought, this is great, and he decided to do the same thing. So he went into the men's room and very carefully ripped the seat of his trousers in exactly the same pattern and came back out into the ballroom. He looked in the mirror to be sure it was exact, exactly the same. And uh, they began to dance. And uh, more people became enthused and happy and started merrily dancing around. And then a, th a third person decided to do the same thing. And shortly thereafter, one after the other, all the men in the patio out outside in the dance area did the same thing. And uh, it created this fashion. So Prabhupada told us that story, then the subject was changed and went on to something else. So as we were walking back to the temple, which was about a quarter of a mile walk from Prabhupada's apartment, uh, Shamsun and I were just thinking, wonder why Prabhupada happened to tell that particular story. And then we thought back on the conversation and we asked him, not much earlier, how, what we should do, if we had any tips, if we had any hints, what we should do when we go to London. And then we realized that this was Prabhupada's hint, this was his inside story on how to preach in England. Do something that you're enjoying and having a wonderful time. It may be totally unconventional, and, but if you're doing it with great happiness and enthusiasm, it will become infectious and everyone will want to copy you and dance to the same drum, so to speak. So we thought how wonderful it was that uh, Papa told the story and uh, gave us the idea. And it, was, it turned out to be quite true. Our first kirtan was in Soho Square on a drizzly rainy day. And, uh, it was just a few, you know, old old men sort of walking by, turning down their spectacles. And I think the second one was in Trafalgar Square. And as soon as we started chanting, immediately a cluster of policemen gathered a few yards away from us, had a conference, and then sort of summarily walked over to us and told us we'd have to leave or be arrested. But somehow, just by persisting and happily engaging in kirtan, all of this opposition faded away, and an infection began to take effect. Actually, we shaved up shortly after we arrived here, about a year before Prabhupada came, but the reason I was hesitant about it was once I was sitting in Prabhupada's room shortly after he came, and he pointed out that my, my jacket was soiled, and I was very embarrassed. Then he pointed over at Prushatan, who had a pinstripe three-piece blue suit on, and he said, why don't you dress like that? 
And he said, how much did that suit cost? And he said, oh, not very much, maybe a hundred dollars. He said, so, you can dress like that. So, the next day, I was in Oxford. I had to do some business, so I, I bought exactly the same kind of suit and uh, a blue coat to go with it. So I was coming back to show Prabhupada, feeling very proud the same day at Tittenhurst, John Lennon's former estate. And I was walking along the garden path. It was full of pebbles and mud because it had been raining that night. And Prabhupada was approaching me on his afternoon walk. And I was kind of excited to show him how I got this nice suit. So as he was approaching, I thought, well, it's time to offer obeisances. And I began to <laughs> offer obeisances. And then I thought, wait a minute, I can't get on my knees in this mud and stand up in front of Prabhupada and be very angry with me. Again, buying this new suit and then the very same day getting it all soiled with more money. So I stood up and then Prabhupada was kind of smiling and they were walking towards me a little closer, a little closer, and then I thought, well wait a minute, this is very offensive. I can't not bow down to my spiritual master. I must bow down, of course. So I started to bow down and as I was in a crouched position, almost touching the, the ground, I thought, oh I can't do this. Probably very angry with me. So I stood up again, and by that time, I'd, I'd been bobbing up and down like a little kiwi bird. <laughs> Prabhupada was right on top of me, and he was just looking at me with this big smile on his face. And I, I said, Prabhupada, I'm so sorry. I, I wanted to offer you my obeisances, but I didn't want to dirty my suit. And he was just laughing and laughing. That's all right. That's all right. 